So you talk about hard hitting. It's been 14 weeks of hard hitting rugby action in Super Rugby. A lot of complaints off the field from fans, from players, from coaches about the standard of refereeing. We've got one of the greatest refs ever to walk onto the field, Jonathan Kaplan here. And we've been loving talking about his brand new book, winging it about his adventures in fatherhood. But we couldn't get you here without talking a little bit of shop. Um, so I hope you don't mind. I'm going to indulge my, the rugby side of my brain and plug into your massive rugby brain. What do you feel about the standard of refereeing? Do you, do you still care? Do you still watch games and kind of have a thought, oh man, I would have played that differently? Where do you think the level of refereeing in Super Rugby especially, because that's kind of the, the big focus at the moment? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think there's too much um, in the media at the moment for, for it to be glossed over and swept under the carpet. I think there's obviously sometimes a little bit of sensationalism. Um, sometimes I think it goes a little bit too far. But I think, by and large, there is a um, there's potentially an issue in respect of uh, the experience that um, that this young group of referees hasn't got, and perhaps that's shining through in some of the tight calls that need to be made in games. And I've said for a long time, um, and I don't know why that it's you know why it's still the same. We're, we're way down the track, you know, 20 years down the track from uh, inception, that I really think more needs to be done in respect of coaching of referees to get them on the same page. Uh, this is a young group of refs, so you, you know, you, you, if you push people um, quite quickly, you're going to get... Uh, yes, yeah. they'll, they'll, miss, they'll miss certain things and they'll grow from those learnings, which is happening at the moment. And that doesn't help a coach who's fighting for his job or a player who wants yeah. the correct decision, but it is what happens when a, when a top group of referees leaves the stage and then there's a vacuum, there's a hole. And so how do you fill that hole? It has to be from uh, the, you know, the next young group of referees coming through. It's amazing to me that you, and I think you did that as a, as a ref throughout your career, look at it from not only the, the rules perspective, but also from the players and the coaches and, and that, yeah. that bigger picture. Do you still have that emotional investment in rugby? If I talk about now, obviously, the upcoming Springbok tour, do you, how, do you, how does your mind approach something like that? How do you feel the box are at the moment. How are you feeling about their, their tour of England? Yeah, look, I, I still, I mean, I love rugby. I still commit every weekend or most weekends that I can to schools rugby. That's my, that's my give back, uh, you know, that I feel that I can at the moment. Um, I think, I think, you know, I, I don't think our teams are doing well. You know, I, I see with interest, Rossi said, no, the teams are doing well. I don't know if that's a media statement or his words. <laughs> He's but got to play the PR game. Yeah, right I, I, I don't think they're doing well. You know, I, I think by and large, who, who's, which of our teams is going to win the competition or in line to win it? I think they, the, the, I think a lot of good players, uh, but I think they're underperforming. Uh, so I'd like to see how he, he gels them together because the one thing I will say is that I don't think there's a lack of passion. Yeah. And I do think that uh, we've got good players but I do think also that they're underperforming. We've just lost our way a little bit, but you, you see the likes of Jesse Creel, a couple of the guys that seem to be on the back burner starting to find a little bit of magic again, and I think it's because we've got some good coaching on all levels this side. Who would you make Springbok captain? Obviously, Evan's still injured. Looks like he's an injury doubt going into England. Who would you see as the captain to take us into the rugby championships, and can we win the rugby championships? No, I don't, I don't think we can win it. Um, I, I wouldn't be looking at the rugby championship. I'd be looking at the World, World Cup. Cup. Yeah, so, so the World Cup and beyond. I mean, Rossi's contract apparently is six years, so he should be looking at a guy that's young enough you know, like a brave decision, like a Graham Smith in cricket. Yeah. So who came on in his, I think it was his ninth test or something like that. Uh, you, you make a brave call. I think Aidan Markram, they tried him and yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just to get that same uh, type of flow going. I'd be looking at someone like that who, who there's, a, there's a picture of this guy going through to not just this World Cup, but the following one as well. And potentially somebody who is a good uh, speaker and is happy to challenge. Those, those two are, are very important. Not just challenge the opponent, challenge... Uh, authority figure. Was it? Uh, I mean, I'm going to continue this chat off camera now because yeah. we just don't have the time. I'm dying to know whether he appreciated someone challenging him on the field. Absolutely. But, um, Absolutely. Jonathan, yeah. it was so awesome to have you here. Congratulations uh, again on this brilliant book. It's, it sounds like the most amazing read. I'm going to chew through it. Apparently, it'll take about two days to get through the whole thing, so I'm going to do it this weekend. Um, congratulations on this adventure, on um, your adventure as a, as a father. I'm sure it's only now really interesting, getting interesting when, when Caleb starts playing rugby. Then it's going to get really, really interesting. We, yeah. we love you on the show. Thank you yeah, so much, yeah, man. Thanks, well man. done.